six people have died after a violent earthquake struck South America. It was an 8.2 magnitude quake. It struck off the coast of Chile and it triggered landslides and a tsunami. More than 900,000 people have been moved to safety. Look at these pictures. They really tell a story better than any words can. Uh, according to the Chilean Office of National Emergency, all these people have been evacuated. There were scenes of panic in Peru and elsewhere as the great rattled shelves in shops. And there have been widespread power outages, damage to roads and aftershocks. About 300 prisoners took advantage of the chaos and escaped in the port city of Ikuke, which also saw a small uh, tsunami. The epicenter of the quake was uh, off the northern coast. Uh, join me over in the super screen again, and you'll see. So this is where the epicenter uh, took place. More than 2,500 homes suffered structural damages in uh, this part of the country. The military have been dispatched to maintain public safety. Uh, but if you take a look at the, the main economic areas, uh, these are the main uh, copper mining areas, and they escaped serious damage. However, production was disrupted when some workers were moved to safety. BHP Bulletin, Glencore, and Anglo-American have interest there. The jolt sent copper prices to a three-month high. It goes to show how vulnerable one of Chile's key industries is to Mother Nature. Now, Rolando Santos of Cine in Chile joins me now. Uh, Rolando, put into perspective, obviously we know there have been more serious quakes, uh, but w with hindsight now, looking at this one, give us your perspective. Well, I think and not minimizing in any way the six people who died, the reality is we got away relatively unscathed. I mean, I was here for the earthquake in 2010 where literally huge blocks were on fire and buildings all over from Santiago all the way down to Concepcion, uh, which is about five hours away from us, were destroyed. This one pretty much stayed in the area. As you said, the copper mining industry virtually was not affected, um, and we double-checked and triple-checked on that. The other history that you should be aware of, that particular area of Chile, in 1877, there was an 8.2 magnitude earthquake that produced a tsunami wave that was 80 feet tall. So when you put all that into perspective, the reality is there are buildings down. We don't know how many yet because they're still evaluating it. Very few injuries that have been reported by the government. As I said, six deaths. But when you put all that into perspective, I think the country got away uh, fairly easily right. with what happened. On the other thing, Richard, in talking about the, the production for that area, other than copper, there isn't very much that comes out of that particular region. And if the copper mines are telling us and the copper industry is telling us that they did okay, then pretty much from an impact, economic impact, uh, we did okay. On the issue, there's always aftershocks. The aftershocks have been serious but not terrible. Sure. I, I, what I want to understand now is, I know predicting earthquakes is just about impossible, but is there a feeling that there's another one waiting to hit? There's always a feeling that another one is waiting to hit. There is more shaking, rattling, and rolling in this country than anywhere else that I've lived, and I've lived in California and other places. Um, just to give you an idea, the big one was supposed to happen now because that region started shaking on March 16th, I believe, with a 7.6 earthquake. And so there's always the threat of the big one, and no one seems to be able to really get a handle on it. Um, if you talk, think about the big one, uh, there was one in Santiago in 1960 that was a 9.5 that killed 5,000 people. Now, in theory, that was the big one and yet we've had others that don't quite come up to that particular level. So I'm not sure how you define a big one. I think yesterday's was a big one by sheer number, and I think that we got away without a lot of injury and damage just because that's right. the way Mother Nature and things turn out. Now, to, to, to viewers who may not be as familiar with Santiago, with Chile, with the region, has there been a noticeable um, uh, movement in construction to build for earthquakes in the future so that Absolutely. if if one happens god forbid if one happens we're not going to find a developing country where everything falls down like a pancake 
Absolutely. And that happened after the 1960 quake. Basically, one of the reasons that there wasn't more damage back in, in uh, 2010, and there wasn't more damage to the major cities, uh, the two major cities in this case, which is Iquique, Iquique and Arica, is because they have a tremendously sophisticated uh, system of construction for earthquake resistance. In fact, most people from around the world come here right. because it really has been the testing ground for that kind of construction. Good to talk to you, and thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, from Chile, we appreciate it from our uh, for our sister station CNN Chile. Now, as if we don't have enough accessories for our TVs, Amazon is bringing out yet another one.